So the idea is this, more pixels equals better picture, but why? How does it work? What's the difference? And what is a retina display? That's what I'm here to tell you about. You see, resolution, or the number of pixels and how they're distributed, is really only as important as screen size and viewing distance. In fact, screen size and resolution come together to form one metric called PPI, or pixels per inch. Pixels per inch is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's if you took a ruler, put it on your screen, that's the number of pixels that would be along it. So the pixels per inch is actually a measure of how sharp the display is. And for the record, more pixels does equal a better picture. So let's call real life ultimate clarity. When you take an image digitally, it breaks it up into pixels or dots. And it says, this one is this color, that one is that color, and so on and so forth. And it arranges it in such a way that it creates an image. So when you get to screens, whether they're TV screens or phone screens or computer screens, they're all really similar these days. So you take the picture, you put it on a screen, and the picture, made up of pixels, tells the screen what pixels to make what color, and then you get the picture. That's pretty much it. So if I take a number like four, you can draw out a rudimentary four with seven pixels, but that's pretty blocky. If we want to make it a better looking four, we have to crank it up to, I don't know, 30 pixels or something like that. We have to throw in more to add information to describe a more complicated picture, like a four that has curves and such. Now think about size. Our eyes are only so good. So if I've got a really tiny looking for, it doesn't need to be made up a lot of, of a lot of pixels because I'm not zoomed in on it. I can only see so much. And your, eye, your brain actually kind of just infers the shape from a fairly limited amount of information. So if you think of the clock on your computer, just right in the bottom right on a Windows machine or, or wherever it is, it's really small, but that's fine. It looks pretty clear. That's totally cool. But if you take a screenshot of that and blow it up, as you can see here, it looks pretty bad. The reason for that is because there's only enough pixels to display that small version of it. So when you blow it up, you're making the computer interpolate where the new pixels should go because the computer is displaying it using pixels, but more pixels than are defined in the image. Do you follow? There's not really enough information to make them bigger without losing quality. There, the amount of information that was put into them was to maintain a quality at the size you were going to be viewing that at, if that makes sense. I took this picture and I typed some text onto it, and I displayed it onto my 1080p TV. Uh, this is just to show you that it's not just the number of pixels, but also the size and the viewing distance. So, if I take my camera now and I zoom in on that picture a little bit, you can see that um, it's not perfectly clear. There are certainly imperfections in, like, diagonal lines and such have what we call aliasing or kind of a staircasing effect. That's normal. But when you look at it from the couch or wherever, it looks fine. It's not that much of a problem with the TV because you sit fairly far away. All right, so back to the pixels per inch. That 1080p display is 39 inches. And if you do the math, it actually works out to 56.5 pixels per inch, which is bad, or at least in certain terms. You see, for a TV, it's fine because I'm sitting far away. My eyes can't pick out the detail at that distance. But for something like a phone, um, the, the pixel density needed to make something look like real life is somewhere around 300 pixels because you view it from like one or two feet away from your face. It's much closer than a TV screen. You can see more detail. And as such, if you want it to look as good as your TV does from the couch, it's got to be a higher pixel density than your TV is. Makes sense still? So that's all that Apple's Retina display is. It's a rating for a screen being a high enough pixel density, or number of pixels per inch, or basically how many pixels are crammed into a small area, being high enough that you can't see the individual pixels. And if you can't see the individual pixels, then it looks kind of as clear as real life. So now if we get into like a 5 inch screen that's 1080p, that's the same number of pixels as my TV has, except it's like a 5 inch screen instead of a 39 inch screen. It looks really clear and it's at a pixel per inch of like 440. Now if you remember, according to Apple, we only need 300 for it to be perfect clarity. So the rest is just kind of bonus, I guess. It's actually not even necessary. 
the resolution is higher than it even theoretically needs to be, you can stick your face even closer and still not see the pixels until you get pretty close. So again, higher PPI, the better. The PPI is determined by the resolution and the size of the display. A 1080p TV looks nowhere near as good as a 1080p phone when you're at the same distance, but because I sit farther away from the TV, it's not that big a deal. Also, you'll find that this actually makes a much bigger difference for things like text and web pages than it does for movies. All right, that's pretty much it. Let me know your thoughts with a like or a dislike and a comment. Um, just uh, comment if you have any questions, if there's anything I could explain a little bit more clearly. And uh, if you really liked it, subscribe. If you want to check out another video, watch this one, where I unbox a computer with a pixel density of like 282. It's a 4K screen in a 15.6 inch laptop. I love it. It's amazing. Thanks.